Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we talk all things canvas. In case you're new, my name is Lauren and I'm the canvas queen. On this channel, we love to discuss all things Canvas LMS and teaching related. Today, I'm gonna show you an alternative to creating tables. A lot of people use tables to input text, align pages, things like that, but they're not accessible. So what I'm going to show you today is how to create columns using HTML and div tags. So I like to call them division columns. Now, of course, before we get into the nitty gritty of this video, I'd absolutely appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I am on a goal to get to like 10K uh, subscribers. I'm at like 6,200 or so currently. Uh, and so I would love it if you would join my Canvas Queen family, stick around for a while. And of course, share my content with anybody who might be needing to improve their uh, Canvas LMS skills. All right, guys, let's get into the video. I have this canvas page open and you can see that I have created columns, uh, but instead of using a data table, I've actually used uh, div tags or divisions uh, within the HTML editor. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second, but I kind of wanna explain why I'm doing this. Most tables, so when I just insert a random table, let's just make it like the same, where we have our four cells here, one row, and then we can get rid of that border by just clicking border with zero. And so it's like hidden right now. The thing with tables is that they're not accessible. So meaning if a screen reader were to come into play where you needed text to speech, it would not be able to read it unless there was some sort of caption. So when I click off of the table, you'll notice the lovely accessibility checker right here. And it's going to tell me that the table should include a caption. So when you add a caption, it doesn't make the page, you need a caption, so that the screen reader can read all the text within the table. And this just gets messy and it doesn't look nice. And so the whole purpose of using HTML is so that it is accessible. So that's why I prefer using these divisions or div columns. So how did I do this? Well, so within the HTML editor here, you can see we have our div tags and I've added the style display flex. This is the important part of how we get that column horizontal uh, divisions. So then within there, we can add the next div and style, it needs to be flex basis. Then I can decide the width. So basically now my width is 25%. I have four cells, so think of 100% is entirely across the page, and I want four cells, so I'm gonna divide that into quarters. So 25% width for each cell. And then I just keep the margin automatic so that it kind of always is nicely formatted. And then I have my paragraph within this div, and we have cell one, cell two, cell three, cell four. Now, if I wanted to add another one, so let's just say I wanted to add a fifth column, I could easily just copy this and then paste this in like so. Instead of 25%, we're now going to change this to 20%, and I should have now five equal cells or divs, really, horizontally across my page, creating columns. So now when I click away from the HTML editor, now I have this extra cell here that's number five. So what's awesome about this is you can style this, you can add borders, you can leave it as is, you can add images and all sorts of different things. And then I can start adding into each division. So let's say I can hit enter and start adding more text here. Uh, maybe it's a paragraph. Maybe I want to add a image. I do have one image within this course. So I'm just going to hit enter and then go insert images to my course images. And then we'll select the image. And it's going to make sure that that image, of course, is within that division or cell. Now I can always do like 100%. So it's going to be 100% of that 20%. And so I can just keep going. Overall, you can add whatever images, text, you name it within here. 
just to give you guys a better idea of how I use these div columns within my um, templates or courses, I wanted to show you this page. So everything you see here, the alignment of the title image on the left, the text on the right, uh, the buttons on the left, and then we have text on the right again, and then we have this alignment of these module buttons, and then of course at the bottom, more class information buttons. This entire page, I did not use a single table to align my images and my text. I only used the divs that I demonstrated earlier. So when I click edit, you will see when I go to this HTML editor, you will notice the flex, right? The display flex, all of the divs, 70% across, 30%, 90. So they're all different, right? And it's great because again, the entire page now is still accessible. So a screen reader is able to read it. And also I just think it looks really, really nice. The formatting is great and it's easy to use. But let's get a little bit fancier. So I'm actually going to make these buttons. So how I'm gonna do that, we're gonna go back to this lovely HTML code here and we're gonna change up the styling. So basically everything within these quotations, I'm going to add stuff. We're going to add a border solid and then we'll add border radius, radius curve it. So we'll do, I don't know, let's do eight pixels and see how that looks overall. So I'm before I add this, because all I do is copy and paste to the next one and the next one and the next one, I'm going to see if I like the way that this looks. Okay, so I do like this, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to center this now, and we're going to change this to some sort of button. So I'm just going to do like module one instead. So this is a really creative way that you can create buttons if you're not interested in using images. But if you are, that's Again, that's totally okay too. Also, let's do a background color with my lovely little eyedropper here that I talk about so often, great tool. I'm going to do this color and let's take a look at this. Yay, so now I have module one. I'm going to start copying and pasting this into every single division or cell right, that we have. So now I can essentially just take, let's do all of this, and I'm going to leave out the quotation just because it's already there in the other ones. And then within this quotation right here, oh, I missed the first one. We're going to just do paste, 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 and paste. So now when I zoom back out, we've got our uh, different buttons. So I'm going to now center all of, oh, I guess it doesn't want me to do that. Center all of these like so. And now I can change the names of each one. Now they are kind of on top of each other. There's not a lot of spacing in between. Now there's a couple ways to do this, to space them out. This is the easiest way that I like to do it. So after each division, so here's our closing. This is entire code for one. As you work with HTML, you start to see the patterns of everything. But what I'm going to do to create that little space buffer in between, will you? I am just going to add a code, a code that will create some space, but it won't, you won't see it. I'll show you. So now when I zoom out here, you can see I have this lovely little space and I'm just going to copy this code over and over and over again and paste it over and over and over again. So here's our next section, paste. Here's our next section, paste, enter, paste. Okay, so now when I return to the rich content editor, I have all of these buttons. They are perfectly aligned. Uh, a screen reader can read them and I just click save and they're going to adapt with the size of my page too. So when I, for example, I zoom out, zoom in, they're going to change their size because we've used percentages uh, for their widths, which is also really nice because if you're using an iPhone to view this, an iPad, a computer, whatever it is, your different device, it's going to squish everything down and then also, and then pull it apart. If I wanna create an entirely new row, I can actually just copy this and then hit enter at the end and paste 
And now I have an entirely new row of uh, buttons here. But there's another thing that we can do. So I'm actually going to get rid of that. So I'll just hit Command Z. So within my HTML code key, I've added a new slide for our div columns. And I am just going to copy the code again. And we are going to paste this. So now we have, of course, our, our different cells. I'm going to, instead of styling each division or each cell, the ones that are the 25% currently, we're going to do instead, we're going to add a border to create like a box. So I'm going to add a border to this entire div to create like some sort of box. So I'm going to write in border. It's going to be solid, but we can actually, I'm not going to do solid for funsies. I'm going to do dotted for now. And then we are going to make the border color different. Border color. Let's make it pink. The other thing, of course, that I like to add is the border radius. So when I click back on the HTML editor, you'll see those dots are like really tiny, but we have a entire order around all four of these small cells or divisions. So let's make actually those dotted lines bigger. I've changed it up just a little bit here and there. Here's what it looks like. So now we have the border is three pixels. I'm also going to make the dots bigger. Six pixels. The border style is solid. Changing the style to dotted. The border color is pink and we have a border radius of 10 pixels. And there you go. Now we have this fun border and we still have the dividing cells, which is really nice. So you can just like, you can add whatever you want in here, whatever messages are needed. This is just a great thing to use. I highly encourage you to try it out yourself. And again, it is located in my wonderful Canvas HTML editor code key that I will have linked in the description for you. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that it was helpful. If you have any questions or any comments when you are going through this process yourself, feel free to leave a question or comment below. Also a reminder of that code key, it is in the description of this video. Thanks so much and I'll see you on the next one.